Hey everyone, Talk to me, Guzman here with a short video on something I think is pretty cool. If you know enough HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to be dangerous and be able to move, hide, show elements on the screen, then you have enough skill to actually develop your own streaming widgets on stream elements and i've been having a lot of fun in doing this personally and in, um, customizing behaviors on my own stream so i thought i would go ahead and show you how you can do the exact same thing using already existing code to start with so you don't have to start from scratch here i am on the stream elements page and we're going to go to the dashboard page After we visit the dashboard page, we're gonna make sure to go over to our streaming tools and go to my overlays. What you will want to do is go ahead and click on new overlay and choose a resolution that suits you. I think just the default 1080p is fine. You don't have to worry about picking a resolution because you can modify this resolution later. So the 1080p is fine and just click it. And we're gonna start off with a blank canvas. What you are gonna to want to do is go ahead and click add a widget and visit the static custom section. And you wanna click on custom widget. After clicking on custom widget, a widget will be added to your screen. So here is our custom widget. This is the little box that our custom widget lives in. And what you're gonna want to do is click on settings. And settings is mostly where you're gonna live in. Position and size are what adjust the width and the height of said widget. We can do we can convert this to a 500 by 500 dimension for, for the box that, that our widget lives in. Let's see, it's kind of weird, but we'll do 500 by 500. This is the dimension of where our widget lives in, but where we're going to live is in the settings section. Because we used a custom widget, it's already configured with some default stuff. The cool thing about widgets is that you can define your own fields to customize values in the code of your widget. What these settings are is display limit of events, only five. If you only want it in this, for this widget, it's going, it's only going to show five most recent events and settings for displaying different things. So you can define your own fields. You can configure the widget however way you want, whether it's for your own personal use that you want to change stuff up sometimes, change the sizing or change the configurations. Or if you want to build a widget and, you know, for, for, if you have a client or you want to get into the business of building custom assets or streamers, your world is going to be in the open editor window. The best way to do development so far that I found when doing stream elements widgets is in this view where you're going to copy and paste code to execute within the world of stream elements. We have a tab for the HTML where we can add in links to import in fonts from Google fonts or any other CDN or any other font provider or CDN JavaScript libraries and the HTML that you're, go you're going to want to use to make things dynamic. We have CSS that you can set to stylize all your stuff. And here you can also import in fonts, other styles from other resources. And then we have our JavaScript section, and this is where all your JavaScript would go. And there's a couple events that you can hook into for, for stream elements to load the widget, to hook into updates, events that are coming in. Among, those are the predominant ones and the, like plenty of example code in here of inserting in elements into the UI, depending on, on the events that occur. And then the field section is the fields that show up in the settings for it. We talked about the events limit, but here is the events limit field, events limit, and then the label for it and the value events limit is the, is the value and on here, the label is what's being presented in terms of text. 
the key for this is going to be the value that's pulled in the JavaScript over here. There is a little bit of code in here to grab those configurations. Let's see right here, object de object detail field data. And then the field data does a bunch of configurations to decide how the JavaScript should work. But these fields also work in the CSS. If you wanted to customize a background color or positioning, you could use that to your advantage and make your CSS more dynamic. In this case, there's a field for font color. Let's, let's go, let's go find that field actually. Right there it is font color. There a type of color picker. There's the label, there's the default value. And that value is going to be set. And then whatever the user sets in the UI, it will be injected right into here. Let's take a look at that. Let's go try to go find our font color field in here. There it is font color. And then there is a color picker for us to use because we chose color picker. It knows to display a color picker for us out of the box. Even with this custom widget example is there's a lot to kind of look through and to learn. You can, you can go in here, you can play with some stuff. You can go into here and throw in a, uh, the almighty console console log into here to see what is going on. And we, and all you, and then we can just go into the inspect view and see the console log display information here about what exactly is going on. We got a custom event and you can see that it actually had rendered some events that are going on with follows and such and a raid. You can use the almighty console log to debug or display values as if you wanted to know what the heck is going on in the JavaScript. This is great and all, but it's still kind of confusing because there's actually not a lot of information. You can try to gather some information from looking at this, uh, at the example code, but fear not because stream elements actually has provided more information. I'm going to just do a quick GitHub search, quick little Google search for stream elements. And they actually have a GitHub repo that we can use. So if you go to the GitHub page for stream elements, their top pinned repo is called the widgets. And this widgets repo actually has existing code for widgets you can install on your stream. My favorite one to start off with so far is the custom chat because everyone always wants to do their own custom chat widget to, to display the chat on the screen. They have all of the files here that you need in order to do that. I'm just going to go to make my life easier. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the web editor mode for GitHub by pressing the period. And this will launch a web editor VS code. And you can see I've already been browsing in here because these files are already open. But what we can do here is under custom chat, uh, let's just, let's just go piece by piece and let's try adding this into and overriding our custom widgets. We'll start off with, we'll go in order of these tabs of going, we'll grab in the HTML, paste that in. Let's go and grab the CSS next. Paste that in. Next, the JavaScript. And then we have our fields, the settings that we can provide on here. And that's under the widget.json because all our fields are of JSON formatting. Fields is JSON. And I think that's about it. We've just copied and pasted all over all that stuff. Let's take a look what happened. The really cool thing about the chat widget is they added in JavaScript to do a test message. Really, really cool. If we click on this, we can see that we get a, a chat box. Look at that. We can test this message and we, and, and look at that. 
But if we go into the settings here, because of the fields, like it looks like we put this under settings, there's a limit of five messages in here. Let's increase that to, to be seven messages. Let's try that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Awesome. Let's, uh, let's try lowering that to five now. Two, three, four, five. And then now they start hiding. We can go in here, we can go to, we can utilize the examples here that Stream Elements has provided. And then after we do that, we can go into here and start customizing your stuff. We can go into the JavaScript in here and take a look at the code for, this is the example code of receiving a test message, which is really cool. And, and then we can see the code in here for handling a chat messages when a message is deleted, when the message comes through, they've extracted out all the, all the effort of going into displaying a chat message. And you can now go in here and customize. You can either go in here and change the styling in here so that the background of each row, it looks like we already have the configuration for the background, but we can go in here, we can modify the, the CSS to do our own styling, our own behaviors in here. If you wanted to present the data just a little bit differently, if you wanted to add more configuration, extend it, the world is your oyster in terms of what you are personally capable of or what you wanna to learn to, how to do. That's really cool. And there's plenty of other examples to do things to hook into other stream element type of events, like doing polling, showing YouTube videos, doing text to speech. The really, really cool thing is also that it, because this is running within stream elements, you can actually do requests to the stream elements API to fetch things right here. You can do a request directly to the stream elements API, either documented API and fetch anything. And you don't have to worry about figuring out how to do any authentication or anything like that, because this code is running within stream elements. There's no worry about how the heck do I get, how do I, do I do the authentication and login and all that type of stuff? Nope. You can just do a request directly to get information about a user, about your channel, about commands. It's really, really powerful. So what have I done? There's a couple things that I've managed to do and I've actually created my own chat widget. Let's go ahead and take a look at my example chat widget. And here is my chat widget that I customized. Well, let's go ahead and do send a little test message. And I made a chat widget that looks like an 8-bit bubble. Super cool. I, I think, I personally think it was super cool and I had a lot of fun making it. Now, if a new person comes in and sends a message into the chat, it has this really cool 8-bit bubble to display things. Hello? There we go. And just like I talked about, I used that base custom chat example, and I went in and I started customizing everything. I pulled in a CSS framework, NES, NES.CSS. I'm actually importing in from a CDN styles from a library. I am importing in specific fonts that that style wanted. I did my own styling for the boxes, for the colors that I wanted. I tweaked the JavaScript here to inject in the, the code to display the CSS just right and added the HTML to, to achieve that. And also threw in a couple fields. I can modify certain aspects of the bubble if I wanted to. That's what you can do. And I've been experimenting with it a lot more and doing a couple more customized widgets. Here is my little 8-bit layout that I've also done using the NES CSF and using the integration with stream elements to fetch the latest followers, the latest subs, the latest raid, and display that in my own stylized chat box with this blank box for my screen where my screen share will go. And I also added in custom JavaScript to make these tech, make this text blink. Hopefully you think this is pretty cool and it's definitely a new, a new idea for you to go and experiment and come up with uh, new cool ideas and 
maybe even uh, customize your own stream or someone else's stream. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, everyone. Bye.